I'm James Wright. Welcome to my shop. Got a fun thing planned for today. Uh, last week I showed you how to make a scratch stock. Uh, this is a really, really handy tool for doing fine inlays or delicate beading and small things like that. You just want to really dress up a piece and make it look sharp. Um, but a lot of people were asking the question about how do you make the uh, how do you make the iron, the blade, the cutter for it. Um, and honestly, it's very, very simple. So I just want to show you today how to make it, how to set it up, and what all they can do for you. So come along and let's take a look at it. So I make all of my cutters out of an old piece of uh, saw plate. Uh, this one happens to be uh, 0.032. Um, it's, it's so pitted, it's really not worth being a saw anymore. Yes, I can make it work, but I've got others, and this was a, a pretty crummy saw to begin with. Uh, so a lot of people take these cheap saws that you can buy at garage sales for, you know, 50 cents, two bucks, and uh, turn them into scratch stocks. And you can make a, a whole pile of cutters out of this. Uh, so the, the options are just about endless. So let me show you basically what I do. Now, um, there are a lot of different ways of, of, of doing this. You can put it in the vise and put a, uh, put a vise grips on and bend it back and forth and back and forth and back and forth until it snaps. Um, you can score it and snap it, um, but what I like to do is just take some tin snips and cut it. Just like that. And so I've got a small piece. I usually keep them about an inch wide, um, by about an inch and a half to two inches long. That really doesn't matter because I'm going to be completely shaping it here in a moment. So there's the piece we're going to work with. So when it comes to actually shaping the piece, um, basically it is mostly done with files. And I have a whole pile of files. I had a garage sale find a while ago where I bought, I think like a hundred and some files for 10 bucks. Um, some of them are good, some of them aren't, um, but I have a selection that I use all the time. Um, so these round rat, rat tails make fantastic uh, beading cutters. So you can actually uh, cut a bead uh, cutter out of there. Uh, although it, if you're wanting a square square edge, uh, these are fantastic. You're going to want something that has a very fine tooth uh, because you're going to be cutting against the, the uh, uh, against the steel as opposed to along it. So let's see how to do that. So the very first thing you want to do with the surface, um, especially if you bent it, this whole edge will be completely ragged um, and torn, and just it's not what you want to work with. So just take a file and flatten it out. like that. Nice clean surface. Now the first thing I'm going to do to show you is how to make a, an eighth inch inlay cutter. Uh, so basically we're going to be making a groove that is an eighth inch down, an eighth inch across, and an eighth inch up um, so that you can actually put an inlay into a surface. I like to start with a triangular uh, saw file and just to get a corner, a reference corner, and I will keep one surface at 90 degrees to the plate. And so I'm basically cutting a groove 90 degrees to the plate and then 60 degrees away from that. This just gives me a flat side to reference against. There I'm down approximately an eighth of an inch. And then I'm going to use my uh, standard flat file and very carefully and slowly now this file is one eighth of an inch thick and so I know that once I file down so the top of the file is flat with the other side over here I'm an eighth of an inch down now because of what I'm doing I actually want to take this down just a little bit farther that way I have some wiggle room And I'm not worrying too much about running up against the side here. Um, because this file is 90 degrees, that's perfectly fine. And if I move this edge over that way a little bit, oh well. Now I have this side cut fine. I need to cut the other side. So I'm going to take the same saw again. And I'm going to stay a long ways away from an eighth inch. I'm going to put it at like um, 3 16 to almost a quarter.
And one of the big reasons for keeping that gap farther than an eighth inch away from that tooth is that I can always file it closer. I can't always give myself more material. So let's go back and file this side down. So now I have both sides ground down an eighth inch with a little more than an eighth inch wide strip sticking back up. And what I want to do is take one of these sides over until that is precisely one eighth inch wide. Now one of the most important things about this whole process is that you keep the file at 90 degrees to the plate. So you don't want the file to be tipping down or up. Uh, you want to keep the file at 90 degrees to the plate and that will give you a cutting edge that is 90 degrees. Um, and that is the most important thing. It's just on that, uh, just on that very tip, the thing that's sticking up. Don't worry as much about the, the flat plates out here, but when you're actually getting on the tip that's doing the cutting, you want that to be at 90 degrees to the size of the plate. So there you can see the cutter. Uh, it is an eighth inch wide and sticks out from the plate one eighth inch. So now let's do the other side and make a beater. Now to cut the beading cutter, I'm going to start with the triangular um, saw plate cutter, uh, tooth cutter, and then I'm going, that's just going to give me a spot to allow this rat tail to then ride in. So I'm going to start by cutting a round, uh, cutting a point. And just after that much, I now have a spot that this rat tail will stay in and won't hop out. Again, I'm keeping the file at 90 degrees to the plate. Now I'm only going to go down until the plate, until the rat, rat tile has sunk halfway into it. So basically I'm using a semicircle, um, a half of the, the round, rather than sinking too far. And then it is basically just like doing the other side with the, um, the, the inlay cutter, um, except for I need to take off the sides and bring it right up to the edge of that mouth. So I'm going to do the same thing with the triangular file and I'm going to get a starting point and I'm going to start back oh, a little more than a sixteenth away from there, just giving myself a starting point. Because remember you can always file more away, but you can't add more on. And I need to file down deeper than my groove. So file down deeper than that bead. Let's do the other side one here. There's those. I'm just going to use this to remove these sides. Being very careful not to touch that bead area. And now that I'm down to the right depth, um, so I've cut this side down, I want to start filing that edge back until I have just a hair sticking between them. Now it'll probably be like a, a 30 second or less. There's what I'm looking for right there. So now let's do the other side. Perfect. And that's how you cut a beading cutter. So there is your beading cutter. Very simple, very dainty. Now let's see them in action. Now you want to put the scratch stock cutter in so that the plate itself doesn't stick out, just the tiny tooth of the cutter. So I don't know if you can see that in here, but the plate itself is flush or just below the beam of the scratch stock. So just that tooth sticks up. Now the actual use of the scratch stock is very, very simple. Uh, you just sit in there and you slide it. And it's going to take off just a little bit. And one of the nice things about a scratch stock is you can set up a fence that you can cut to, so you can actually create a stop dado uh, without having to pull out a chisel. It just takes a little bit of work, but every time this hits that end, you just 
put it in at the point, pull back. You eventually get this really nice stop data right there. Then to cut a bead, you just do the exact same thing. I just flipped it around so that only the bead is sticking out and with very light, simple passes. Making sure I keep the fence against the wall. So there's a quick view on how to make a scratch stock cutter. Uh, they are honestly very, very simple little tools and uh, they're easy to use. And once you've, once you've played around with it a few times, you start to see all these great, uh, great possibilities. Um, to kind of recap, basically what you end up doing is you take a small piece of steel, usually from an old saw plate, file it to shape, whatever shape you want. And this is where you can really get creative. I've seen people doing um, OGs and other things like that, really, really dainty, tiny little things that you can make whatever you want. Uh, you file it to the shape you want, you stick it into the scratch stock, you put it the depth you want, and you just slowly scratch your way into it. And you can get some really, really cool little shapes. So that's about it for today. Uh, I hope you like this. Please let me know in the comments below, uh, is there something you'd like to learn? This was actually from a uh, question in one of the other comments, and I would love to uh, hear what your questions are. Is there something you'd like me to cover in the future? I'd love to do a video for you. If you like this video, hit the uh, thumbs up or subscribe, and you might like one of my other videos. Hope you have a wonderful day.